Hello and welcome back everyone to Titanfall 2 on Rocket Rabbit Common Theories Campaign. And in this episode, after we've successfully gone through the gimmick mission, we are going to be continuing on and attempting to get over to the uh, front, uh, Frontier main base uh, in order to tell them about, well, Anderson is deaded and uh, he found stuff, and uh, he found the, the uh, fold weapon that uh, we didn't know about and what it does. And so now we gotta, you know, deliver info. Yes. <laughs> Planet Harmony. There's nothing harmonious about what we're going to be True, doing. True, because, uh, well, we don't actually ever get to Planet Harmony. Um, yeah, the entirety of Titanfall 2 takes place on Typhon. Specifically, like, across a, a total of two continents, but, you know, it's not all that important. Hi, my name is Officer Ooh, Ranger Friendly. We can go rock climbing, ha 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 But we can complete his mission if we can reestablish contact with the fleet. The interstellar beacon ahead will serve our needs. Let's hope someone on our side is listening out there. There is only one way to find out. We must uphold the mission. The mission at all costs. Well, also, the there's a satellite the there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stan. I'm sorry your gay little song killed your best friend. But because this is a because this is a level in an FPS game, as we are approaching on the objective, BT tells us to wait, and uh, yep, there are stalkers about. Also, uh, there's a new loadout over there. We start a walking. Caution! I detect traces of poisonous chemicals within the farm. Oh God damn it! What is this fog? Scanning. The ground fog is a Alright, so this is the Ronin! I recommend you embark when operating in hazardous environments with greater than one PBM tungsten hexafluoride. Pilot, I'm detecting militia forces. Yeah, you don't want to go anywhere near fluorine fluoride compounds. I mean it's good for your toothpaste. Compounds, Mr. Cloud. Stalkers, and then make direct contact with the militia riflemen. Mm. All right, so now we can actually commentate on this stuff because this is a uh, uh, this is a pretty standard zom uh, zombie defense uh, zombie defense mission right here. All we got to do is make sure that uh, that each of the uh, stalk uh, stalker uh, stalkers that are you know coming up from the mist because you know we're also uh, incorporating Stephen King's uh, the mist into our FPS games now. Gets taken, uh, gets taken down, you know, before we end up uh, losing out on all of our, uh, uh, all of our allied forces. This particular mission is actually one of the longest in the game. Um, we will be here for quite some time, but this segment of this mission is actually pretty short. Are we just running dudes over? Well, yeah, we're a giant titan. We can step on these robots and have no consequences. Yay. Yeah, womp. Oh, I mean, I heard that one. That made a pretty... I mean, that, that sounded a lot less robotic and a more like, wow. That sounded more like a grasshopper. BT-7274 to militia forces. All threats have been eliminated. You saved our asses. And those stalkers just kept on coming. We may not have lasted much longer. Hey, you guys could probably could have held off for another two hours. Unless, of course, you're all out of ammo. But even then, there's L-Stars floating around. So, just use the L-Stars. That is a very disappointing elevator. Sure. Recommend you disembark. It's okay. They they have they have filters in this place. Yes, filters. What is the status of the beacon? The power is shut down. We've lost all control of the beacon. We need something like this to jumpstart the system, but this one's destroyed. Designation: Arc Tool. So now we're going to get, uh, well, once we actually do this uh, next relatively cool platforming section, we're going to get one of the more interesting gimmick uh, gimmick items uh, of the entire playthrough. And sadly, we only really get to use it for this level. This level is built almost entirely around this gimmick item. And I like it when our FPS games do this. I do, because it, it, it makes it so that we actually have, you know... Uh, really interesting set pieces to, to uh, plan level uh, levels and uh, levels around and enemy encounters around as well. 
Yeah, it makes it something other than just a first-person shooter. Is Just like in the last mission, we had time travel gimmick, and now we have arc tool gimmick. Fight. Right. The, ma the Mastiff is actually an extremely powerful shotgun. I, I really like it. It's not the shotgun that I end up having all that often, um, but it is the shot. But it is a shotgun that I uh, that I like having. Whoosh! Be careful of the ele of the uh, electrified hazards. Those will do some pretty significant damage to you. They won't instant kill you, thankfully, but I think they will disable your second jump. So they'll effectively instant kill you because you know that's a exposed that's expo exposed planetary mantle down there. BT, sure. tell me what I'm doing here. Your mission is to obtain an arc tool. Using it, we can jumpstart the power system. Huh. The jump start. I see what you did there, BT, because I have to do a lot of jumping. No, no, no. He's just referencing the Magic the Gathering set. Right. Mm. Also, uh, because this is a robot, this is a uh, robotics facility alongside a, uh, a a transmission beacon. Expect there to be a lot of drones, and eventually we'll have to fight. A, we'll have to start fighting some stalkers in here as well. But like this one, thankfully oh. the Mastiff two shots a majority of the stalk uh, majority of the stalkers, and will one shot like all of the uh, all the drones. Everything is fine, sir. I'm going to hit the bippity boops as programmed. Enemies detected in vicinity. Must hit bippity boops. And boink. Also, we uh, severed his legs from his body with a single shot with a shotgun blast. So, yeah, the mastiff is cool. It's, it's a cool shotgun. It will make Love it will me. make it so that you have friends on your birthday. Allow me to put some space between your shoulders and the top of your head. The, 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 the one problem that the Mastiff actually has is it's relatively low clip size, but because it's effectively a very powerful pump action shotgun, you don't have to do full reloads on it in order to uh, in order to start uh, firing with it again. I'm always weird when it comes to pump act, uh, pump uh, shotguns in video games because certain pump shotguns are extremely yeah. powerful and are and are well worth the downside, but then there's a majority of pump action shotguns where. Yes, they're powerful, but they take so long to reload that I don't really want to use them. Well, pump action shotgun is to tactical shotgun as bolt action rifle is to semi automatic. Did we just die? Yes, we died. Oh. I just went fucking screen to black. I wanted to watch this ragdoll into oblivion. Uh, we don't get a third person death camera in this game. Yeah, we do. I don't think we do. No, we, we fucking ragdolled. We we had a very humorous ragdoll in an earlier part because we got the shit blown up out of us and we went, you know, fucking legs over ass in the air and then fell back down due to gravity. I don't recall that. But then again, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I <so>. do. <laughs> it was funny. Boom. All right, we turned down the lift. Ah! Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, wow. Unlike a, unlike 2D platformers, our double our double jump is actually an air hop. So, well, actually, because it's an air hop, we have the ability to mitigate the falling damage with it. Um, a majority of 2D a majority of 2D action platformers also have theirs be air hops. So, we stole his have arc tool. A nice day. That he made me sad. sad. I liked that gun. So this is what the arc tool does. It allows us to activate uh, specific on-off on switches at range. It will also later uh, later on in this level allow us to uh, call uh, call for specific robotic aid. It is honestly a really goddamn cool uh, uh, cool way to interact with uh, with this level uh, in its in its entirety. But again, we only have the we only have the arc tool for well effectively this level. Yep. I do like using lightning guns like this. It's honestly a really cool uh, way to use the Unreal Tournament lightning gun. And... Boink. Red is fat. Red is bad. Green is good. Red is bad. Green is good. Mm. And our tools turn, uh, uh, turns uh, these switches off. So there. It's an alternator. Uh, a effectively, yeah. It's an on-off switch. 
Now, I'm not entirely sure how much of the platforming segments you actually, you have to do here. Because uh, we end up going through we end up going through this section uh, re uh, relatively quickly. Oh. Don't get caught in the wind turbine. And and if you do, make sure you're only caught in, uh, for a very a very short amount of time. Um. Yeah. No. Go. All right, try it again. We can make this jump. I promise. Thank you. See? Velocity. Momentum. Headshot. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this is a show. This is a showing off how well uh, why we were using the Mastiff uh, rather explicitly because the Hamlock assault rifle is not that good against uh, against the uh, against the stalkers. Yeah. All right. Now this is open. Whee! Yeah, this might take a little practice. No, because you can, uh, because you can effectively uh, reset uh, reset your uh, up, your momentum whenever you do the double jump. So it's very nice and pretty simple. And now you have to use the arc, uh, the arc tool while sitting double jump in order to uh, tur uh, turn off these fans and end up right back here. And I back. Hope we you go. enjoyed that. Those were amazing moves, sir. Welcome back, sir. Our sincerest apologies to the player that took multiple retries in order to do that. Uh, it should only take them, like, not two tries at most. Because it's still relatively simple platforming. Yes, it's in first person, but, you know, you've got you've got the mobility tools to make it so it's, it's never really an issue. Power chamber relays are offline. The arc tool should be able to jump stop them manually. Mm. Yep, over this way. So it's doing the world of cloud as we go as we go over to a reset the fuse box. Well, uh, been playing a little more uh, involved chess openings. Um, I'm trying to open Sicilian defense uh, pawn to. Pawn to c5, and then not pawn to e6, but pawn to d6. Because even if my opponent opened with the knight to f3, which I've lost to numerous times, that um, what this does is it's going to it, it's going to force a little more complication into the game, little nuances that will make black and white kind of not clash into each other at the center of the board, but more like advance in different directions around the center in order to find some kind of opening based on variables and variations and such. But I have I have lost enough times opening Sicilian defense while playing as black, C5 pawn, and then D6 to, and then E6 pawn to say, you know what, I'm gonna not open with those two this time. I'm gonna do something different. Oh no! I bet the IMC are on their way. That is a reasonable assumption. McCord, can we bypass the module? No, sir. Not unless we want to send a message to the entire IMC fleet. Then the module is going to have to be repaired manually. Pilot, we have to do everything, Mr. Cloud. Just absolutely everything. You're up for another trip to hell, Cooper. You know, it would be a very boring game indeed if we just sat back and watched the game play itself. They call that a but movie. Do we have to do manu manual repairs on something that we are not uh, qualified or trained on? I mean, come on. All right, in the next episode, we'll continue on with The Beacon as we attempt to go and repair The Beacon because the module on The Beacon is destroyed Be and smoking. The Beacon! There is no bacon in this level. I'm sorry. <laughs>